All right, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open Godot, click on new project over here, and this window will pop up. Type in the project name, I'm just gonna call mine how to code, and select the project path. When you're ready, click create and edit. All right, so let's add a 2D scene over here. Here in the scene tree, you can see we have node 2D. Let's rename that. And I'm just gonna call mine code. Let's attach a script. A script is where all our code is going to be in. So the language is GD script, inherits no 2D, and we're going to use the default template. Click create. Uh, as you can see, Godot has already generated some code for us, but we don't need all of it. Let's delete this bottom part here and the top. All right, let's delete this line right here. And we're gonna print something to the console. So we do print with parentheses and double quotes. I'm gonna type, hello world. End it with a semicolon, control S to save. Uh, here's fine. All right, now we're ready. You can click play to run your project or press F5. It wants us to, to select a main scene. We want the one we just created, code.scene. Now out here, I don't know if you can see it in the output window, it says debug process started. Godot is compiling our code. And here we have a blank window. Don't worry, that's expected. Look back here in the output window though. Here it says, hello world. Just like our code said, print hello world. All right, let's stop the project. You can either X out of the window or click the stop button up here. Now I wanna talk about variables. Variables are used to store information. And in your code, you can reference them to get that information and manipulate uh, the information they hold. Generally good practice to give your variables a meaningful name. So in Godot, to declare a variable, we use the keyword var, and I'm gonna call my variable greeting. I'm gonna tell it that, I'm gonna say it's a type string, I'm gonna give it the value, hello world. And end it with a semicolon. Now this, this string, this phrase, hello world, is stored in our variable greeting. So we can come down here and replace this with our variable greeting. Let's click play. And there we go, it says hello world. All right, let's make some more variables. Bar first word of type string equals hello. Bar second word type string equals world. All right, I wanna pause right here and talk a little bit more about strings. So, so far all the variables we've created have been of type string. Here we explicitly declare it as a string and here we assign it the value of a string. So what is a string? A string is a string of characters. Characters, are the letters, numbers, symbols, basically anything you can type on your keyboard. And they're usually found between double quotes. So for example, this is a string. So let's delete this. All right, let's use our new variables. Here in the print function, I'm gonna type in first word plus second word. What this is going to do is concatenate these two strings, basically put them next to each other. Let's click play and see what happens. And look, there we go. Hello world. As you'll notice though, there's no space or exclamation mark here. So let's put those back in. So we're gonna do first word plus a space. Here we have a string that has a space in it. And then plus an exclamation mark. When we run that, 
we get our original greeting, hello world. So hopefully you guys understand a little bit more about how strings work. Now, before we wrap this video up, I wanted to do a brief uh, introduction to comments. You can see I've already been using them. Uh, this is a comment right here. Uh, you can use you can use a comment to describe what's going on in your code. Words in our output. And the way you make a comment is by uh, putting a hashtag symbol at the start. This tells Kado that what you'll write on this line is not uh, code. So as it reads your file, it's going to read line one, line two, line three, line four. When it gets to line five, it's going to see this hashtag symbol. It's going to skip it. It's going to know, don't read the rest. But like I said before, you can use comments to help you describe uh, what your code is doing because it's not always obvious. You can also do multi-line comments. To do that, you do three quotation marks. Oops, that's four. And now you can write multi-line comments, as many lines as you want. All right, that about wraps up this video. Thank you for watching.